Can you guess what song I was trying to play? I'm sure you're wondering, what instrument is this? Does it look like anything you've ever seen before? Does it sound like anything you've heard before? Welcome back to Wonder Space with Miss Natalie. Today we're going to explore a Ghanaian xylophone and we're going to learn more about sound. Okay, so we're going to sit very still and try and listen to the sounds around us. Hmm. I can hear the birds chirping. I can hear the cars zooming past. What can you hear? Sounds can be soft or loud, high or low. Sounds are made when something vibrates. That means it moves back and forth. The vibrations travel through the air as sound waves. Can you do the action with me? Travel through the air as sound waves. These sound waves travel to our ears and causes our eardrums to vibrate. And then our brain understands it as sound. How cool! What happens when I hit the bars on the xylophone? That's right, they vibrate! You can try this quick experiment at home. That was amazing! Remember, the vibrations travel through the air as sound waves. Did you know that sound can travel through water too? In fact, sound always has to travel through a medium like air, water or solid objects. Now, let's take a close look at the different parts of the xylophone. Are you ready to be observant? Are you ready to explore? Different types of xylophones are made in different parts of the world. This xylophone comes from the northern part of Ghana and it's called Jill. What material do you think this xylophone is made of? That's right, wood. Fun fact, did you know that the word xylophone comes from the Greek words xylon, which means wood, and phone, which means sound, and together we have xylophone. How interesting! But does that mean that all xylophones all over the world are made of wood? No! Sometimes they can be made of metal or other materials. I love how carefully you're looking at the parts of the xylophone. Come closer! Can you tell that these bars are different lengths? We have the longer ones on the left side and the shorter ones on the right side. Now I'm going to hit the longest bar on this xylophone. Let's listen carefully to how that sounds. You ready? Okay, now we're going to hit the shortest bar on this xylophone and we're going to listen carefully to how that sounds. Do they sound the same? No! Can you help me describe these sounds? Let's try that again. This one sounds deeper, lower. This one sounds higher or sharper. We call this pitch. Can you say pitch? The sound an object makes changes depending on the size, shape or material of the object. Let's find out what's really happening. When something vibrates quickly, it makes a high pitched sound. When something vibrates more slowly, it makes a low pitched sound. So we have high pitch, low pitch, high pitch, low pitch. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you about these sticks that I've been using to strike the bars. These are known as mallets, a wooden mallet. In Ghana, they pad the wooden sticks or mallets with 
rubber from tires, recycled rubber from tires. Let's keep exploring. What are those round objects there? Those are called calabashes. These are a type of gourd. The gourds are placed beneath the bars to increase the sound or to amplify the sound. Calabashes are used for different things in Ghana. They can be different sizes or shapes. Look at what I have here. This is a gourd, what we call a calabash. It can be used um, to hold water. It can be a kind of bowl. You can drink from it. Or it can be a rattle. Remember how I said that the bars are arranged by size? The gourds beneath are also arranged by size. But now I'm going to have a professional xylophone maker show you how he arranges the gourds. Each bar is carefully tuned to produce a particular sound. Now, what you can do, and then you press in them. Mr. Christopher makes amazing xylophones and he always has to make sure that they sound right. Mr. Christopher comes from a family that makes xylophones. Where he comes from, they call it drill. He explained that a xylophone is used to communicate, like a xylophone language. Mr. Christopher's xylophones have been all over the world. He made the wooden xylophones for the Lion King Broadway. Let's see if I can play a song from the Lion King and let's see if you can spot the song. Actually, I can't play the rest. Can you help me sing it? Let's go. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. We have learned so much about the Ghanaian xylophone and about sound. But I know that most of you won't have a xylophone lying around the house. So we're going to learn how to make a water xylophone at home. It's very important that you do this experiment with an adult. Why? Because we're using glasses and glass is a material that can break. So make sure that you do this with an adult. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six glasses, a bottle of water and some food coloring. Don't worry if you don't have any food coloring. Now I'm going to fill our glasses with different amounts of water. I'm going to put the most amount of water in this glass and the least amount of water in this glass. Now I'm going to add some food coloring so that you can see the amount of water in each glass clearly. You just need a drop. Ooh, that was more than a drop. Now I'm going to use a plastic spoon to lightly hit the glasses. Oh, that's a lovely sound. Now I'm going to hit the glass with the most amount of water. And I'm going to hit the glass with the least amount of water. Let's do some quick revision, shall we? Now remember, sound is made when objects vibrate. The vibrations move through a medium as sound waves. And in this case, our medium is water. So when you change the amount of water in the glass, you change the sound waves. Low. Hi, now can you play a song with your water xylophone? 
Did you have fun making music with your water xylophone? Well done. You've learned so much today. You've listened carefully and you've learned a lot. And as I always say at the end of our lessons, Wonder Space Explorers are wonderful. Join us next time.